I hope y'all ready for this because this right here is some shit. Uh, going live in five, four, three, two, and so this is a lot more formal than I pictured it. Okay, uh, let me introduce myself. I am award-winning author Sage Garden. No. Down, down, put it down, down low. Put it down, down, put it down, down low. Lock your windows and lock your door. Put it down, down, put it down, down low. You know life when it rains it pours. Put it down, down, put it down, down low. Don't take me home. Cut. Vlogmas. Merry Vlogmas. Day number two. I am staying committed to my commitment. Committed to my commitment of doing Vlogmas. So today I wanted to just talk about something really exciting that is happening that actually happened today, but I also wanted to kind of take you behind the scenes, you know? So today, a series that I'm starring in called Only Girl in the World dropped on I Elevate Plus TV. Yay, yay. So the pilot came out and I'm super excited. I'm super proud of the work. Let me tell you guys, I got my booster shot um, day before yesterday. And at first I was okay. Like I got dressed, I filmed some content, I did my work. And then I was like, whew, I'm not feeling so well. <laughs> but I still pushed through. Next thing I know, in the middle of filming, I'm like, uh, yeah, I think I need to rest. Let me tell you. The fever came, the chills came, I was out. I was out and I woke up to all these text messages and they were like, oh my gosh, I love your acting. The show is so good. You're such a great actress. Good to see you in this role. I'm scrolling through my text messages like, what? What are they talking about? And then when I like came to, I realized that the pilot dropped. And so I was really excited. I didn't get a chance to enjoy it fully because I was still sick. I'm just now feeling better. Um, but the show is called Only Girl in the World. And I just wanted to take you guys behind the scenes. Let me tell you. First of all, I should be offended because so many people that know me, they're like, oh, this show is about you. It's not, I mean, there's some similarities, but it's definitely not. It basically follows this character. Her name is Sage Garden and she's writing a book about dating and she's dated a lot of people, um, you know. So um, it's just really about her navigating that and there's some twists and some turns and this little reality TV thrown in there. It's really fun, but let me tell you, Filming this project was not fun, guys. I had the biggest breakdown I have ever had while filming this project. And it's so crazy because the reason why we decided to do this project was because we spent weeks filming a project with somebody else, right? We cast it, we... Uh, rehearsed, we filmed, we finished the project and we got ready to go into post and all of a sudden I get an email from a lawyer. I can't even go into all of that. But needless to say, the project never came to life. And it was really disheartening. You know, it was really upsetting for so many reasons, you know? People tell you about doing business with friends and how you shouldn't unless you have a contract and all of this stuff, you know? And I have just learned my lesson, you know? I take accountability for whatever role I played in it, but 
I also know that we were kind of blindsided by all of these demands all of a sudden. Um, and so it became very uh, emotional during that time. And, and I got together with my business partner and we're like, okay, well, we need to have a series that is going to fill this void. And so she wrote this series and it was you know, really good. It made us feel really good about having to scrap a project we worked so hard on. So we're like excited. We cast the project. It is going well. And now it's time to film. Now I have done really well over the years, keeping my emotions in check. If I'm going through something in my personal life, you will rarely, rarely, rarely see that show up in my professional life. But this time, I was in the process of this back and forth situationship. You know, it wasn't a relationship. I was actually, um, man, let me tell you, when I, when I do a story time about my Christmas movie that is um, about to drop, The Higher Spirit, it will all make sense because it's kind of all connected. But anyway, um, I was in a situation ship. I was um, dating uh, the person that I'm with now, but because my past wasn't all the way cleared, you know, I was just really honest about that. And, you know, we came to film and this, uh, you know, the, the person who I was in this uh, situation ship with, um, you know, she decided, you know, that not only did she not want to continue, but she also did not really want me in her life anymore. And it was really emotional, not because I wanted to be with this person. I knew that I didn't. I knew that, you know, I was actively being open to whatever God had for me, but it had been so long and so much invested. And I just felt like ending severing ties didn't have to be so heartless, you know? So imagine this, I'm starring in a show. I'm producing a show. I have so many people who are counting on me. And then I'm also dealing with the person who I once thought was going to be my everything, telling me that, you know, <laughs> I'm a narcissist and, um, you know, they don't want to be around me anymore, telling me that they fell in love with their friend who's just a friend, but they're falling in love with her because she's teaching her how to um, be loved, you know, and it's all this confusion. And it's a lot of tears and a lot of arguing. And on top of that, it's very distracting to what has to be done on set. And so I was dealing with this, you know, silently for a couple of days. Um, every day I felt like it was something. Every day it was like, you know, I'm going to do this with this person. I'm going to do that with this person. I feel this way. I don't want to be here. I, like all of this stuff. And on top of it, I wasn't really clear about what was going on. And then, you know, she's talking to other people like in my circle, you know, and, and saying things. And it's just like, I'm so private, like, and I have to be on. And it's not just like these, these people are, you know, just my friends, like they work for me. So now I have to be a boss and you're talking about my personal business on my set and every night I'm crying, you know, you're crying, I'm crying, we're arguing. So we film, we get to like maybe day three, right? This huge, crazy argument happens um, between the director, this person, my production manager and me, right? And this is after so much has been happening. So it's this huge freaking argument, right? And it's in the middle of filming. We have about 15 people. It's in the middle of filming. And I am so emotional. I'm not even in my right state of mind to like snap out of it like I would usually do. 
And then that night, you know, I express how emotional I am. I express how hurt I am. I express all of these things. And she turns around and she's like, well, I need some time. I'm going to go driving with, you know, my friend. Um, you know, and then she put it on me being really jealous. Now, I'm going to tell you guys something. I can be jealous and possessive, but that really wasn't the case, you know, like just the onus of everything being on I'm jealous. It's like, I'm all about black girl magic. I'm all about empowering people. Like there's no reason like I want to celebrate everybody. I do not want to be in any kind of friction with another woman ever, especially in our circle. Like we we have to stay connected. If we don't stay connected, if we don't lift each other up, who is, you know? Cause the world beats us down all the time. So it wasn't really about that, but I was so emotional and, and insecure, okay? Like I was so insecure at this point and this was uh in july you know um you know and i begged i begged her not to go don't go like she was driving my car she was supposed to be working i begged her not to go guess what she did left left the set that we were all working on despite my tears left it was so important for her to go do what she needed to do um and i was devastated now talking about it it doesn't seem like that big of a deal but let me tell you i cried guys on set i couldn't even finish filming never has that happened i don't let people into my personal life and i was so hurt i was crying then couple of hours went by and I called and I was just like, you know, why are you doing this? And she went off on me in front of her people. Like, you know, I'm not going to talk to you now. You just want what you want when you want. I'm not going to give it to you like all this stuff. And I'm just stuck because I'm like, what, what the hell happened at the very, at the very end of the day, we are friends, right? So why, well, we were friends. So why did it have to be like this, you know? Um, and so that night we were filming until like four o'clock in the morning and I couldn't take it. Like I broke down, I was hyperventilating. I didn't think I, I could make it. I just felt like my whole world was shattering and I actually left set. And I feel like I let emotions, even if they were exaggerated emotions, come in the way of my business. And I have never done that before. And it was a wake up call to me. It was a real wake up call to me. We cannot let outside situations affect what we're called to do. We cannot let relationships and friendships and situationships dictate how we show up in our calling, okay? Because filming was not just my job. It's not a hobby, <laughs> you know? It's not just my thing. I'm not just having fun. It is my career and it is my calling. Media is my ministry. And I saw how in one moment of being so emotional and so insecure and so jealous and so worried about what I did wrong, what I did to deserve this. Why am I not loved? Why am I not wanted? Mind you, I have an abundance of love. I have an abundance of people who would who would love to be a part of my journey, you know? But in the moment, all I could think about is I'm being rejected. I am being rejected and it felt like my heart was being stomped on and I lost it. So then I cry all night, guys, like ugly cry. I got to show up to set the next day because I'm still filming. And now all of these people who saw me have a meltdown, you know, they're looking at me and they're like, okay, we don't know what that was about. There's some drama going on over there. Is she okay? And it was so embarrassing to me. It was like, 
I could not believe that I allowed that to happen. But let me tell you guys, I turned it up and turned it on. When I saw the pilot, I was like, dang, nobody would know that that all that was happening while we were filming. There's a scene in the bookstore and that was immediately after the next morning it happened. And I was like, okay, you really, really have the potential to either really excel in your career or really let outside influences prevent you from doing what you're supposed to do. And I, I made a promise to myself, never again, never again. Now, let me clarify something because I don't want nobody coming at me. <laughs> you know, this isn't about bashing anybody. This isn't about dirty laundry. This isn't about anything. You know, if I could tell the story without, you know, telling the story, I would. And trust me, there's a lot that I left out. Um, I understand now that it had nothing to do with the other person or the other person. It had, it had everything to do with me. It had to do with my boundaries. It had to do with my double-mindedness. It has to do with my inability to really see the truth and only see things through a lens of my emotions. Um, you know, now, months later, because I can't tell you how devastating this was, it took me so long to get over it. I used to say, am I ever going to get through a day without crying? Am I ever going to get through a day without feeling rejected? Am I ever going to get through a day feeling not enough? You know, because I, the situation made me feel all of that. And I realized that that had so much to do with me. And I'm not taking accountability away from anybody else. But what I am doing is I'm owning my shit. <laughs> you know, I'm owning it. And we were not in a relationship. And no matter, you know, what was said, thought, promised, you know, um, none of that mattered. We all, everybody, you know, should have the ability to move and flow in whatever way is honoring to what you need, you know? And I was, I guess, trying to prevent that. And I was blocking my own blessings, you know? I was so caught up on one thing and feeling rejected and feeling not enough, not even wanting to really be in that relationship, but just feeling really... um I don't know what the right word is just feeling hurt disposable you know my ego was bruised and bruised and bruised and bruised you know because of that I almost missed out on what God truly had for me you know and I thank God that so many people in my life give me grace and give me space and allow me to navigate. And I understand that I must do that as well. So I don't hold anything against anybody, you know? Um, I know that it was me, <laughs> but let me tell you, uh, watching Only Girl in the World is bittersweet because it's like, I remember how low I was. I don't even recognize that person. I don't even recognize who she is, what she was thinking, what she was feeling. It's, it's really crazy to me. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to share a little behind the scenes, a little BTS. Please check out Only Girl in the World. I'm actually going to post the pilot on my YouTube page so you guys can see it. To see the rest of the season, you have to subscribe to I Elevate Plus TV. Head on over there. We have so much content. We have been working really, really hard. And it's really just the beginning. We have so much more to share with you guys. But check Check it out. Let me know what you think about it. Also, let me know if you've ever been in a situation where you've let your personal life interfere with your professional life and like, how did you handle it? <laughs> All right, guys. So 
that's it for vlogmas day number two tomorrow i'm going to be talking about we need a little christmas which is like my most watched christmas movie and i'm just going to kind of take you guys back through some of the things that happened so if you like that movie and you know you want to know what it was like on set be sure to tune in please don't forget to like comment and subscribe and meh Re vlogmas. Bye.